All right. So one of the biggest pet peeves that I have about the Go language and some of the standard libraries is the way people write their interface documentation. And what I'm showing you right now is the documentation that I use, the, my technique of doing this, is there's a few other people that have done this in the past, I've seen them. But, and I'll, I wanna show you the contrast uh, a little bit so you can see the difference. Right away, when I see the documentation here, I see a little summary, and then I have the, the actual interface. So I can see what, what the interface is, and particularly if you've got more than one, you should usually only have one or two methods, but in this case, like file info, you know, there's more than one. So, and, and then the, the, the longer winded documentation comes down below and in my, this is something that I do, but I'll add a summary of each of the interface actions, um, so that you can actually go ahead and I've already, I'm, I'm in the middle of doing that. So here I am like writing it right now. Right. So this is what it looks like, but I mean, this is a really big block of documentation, right? So what is the alternative to this and why do I do it this way? The main, way, reason I do it this way is because of the reason I just said, I can exit out of here. So this is me. This is another little trick trick here. If you don't know this trick, this is a way to, for you to test whether your struct implements an interface while you're developing it. Uh, and then you can comment that out and then it'll, it'll, it'll show you whether, whether you fail to implement that. That's a, a separate little thing. If I, if I actually commented any of these out, uh, if I change the name of this, for example, uh, this will start to fail because they'll say, oh, you're not implementing driver anymore because you don't have all the methods, right? Separate tip, separate video on that. But, um, and now I save it and I'll get it. But, but like, you know, if you're writing, if you're writing a driver or you're writing an implementation of an interface, you frequently want to probably pull up the interface. So this is actually a really great way to develop against an interface is you create a struct you create a little t technique like this to say it implements the interface. And then you can go back to this line and do capital K and pull up the interface definition and read about the contract that you have to fulfill with the methods and what they, how they need to perform and everything while you're doing it. And then you can go back. Um, if, you, if you're in the middle of it, you might wanna, you know, actually another reason uh, to have that sort of summary at the top is if you have Tmux or something like it, I mean, you could make a tool to do this or you could just use Tmux and then go bam and then grab a couple interfaces out and exit out and go back to, um, to, to pasting those in with Tmux. And now you can paste your signatures in or something, but you actually don't need to do that. Um, it, it is fun, but you, you don't have to do that. So that's a quick technique for um, the reason for doing that. Um, I promise you, if you look around hard enough, you'll see people that do this instead. They will have you know, they'll have like, I'm just going to, I'm going to do one of them so you can see how messed up this is. Um, let's take the, let's take, well, let's see, let's take the clear. Let's take the three lines of clear doc and put those in front of clear. So this, there's lots of standard libraries that do this. Um, and I absolutely detest it. Um, and let me, let me show you why I don't like it. Um, so by doing it this way, Hey, how you doing? So, by doing it this way, some would argue, oh, it's like written right there by the thing. But this makes it very hard to, to see the interface when you're doing the editing over here. So, and mo most of the time, honest to God, I don't need to see all the details. I only want to look at them if I need them. I just want that little summary. So I'll go to the driver again. Let's go look at it now. And whoa, wait, what just happened? Did I not save? What just happened? What just happened? Something is happening, my friends. What, what driver is it pulling in? That, that is weird. LSP didn't update you, I think. Interesting. What is going on? You think I need to exit and then reopen? Yeah, I've been finished loading packages. Okay. Yeah. Oh, God. That was weird. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Please, no. Please don't do it that way. If you spend enough time programming Go, you will run into this kind of inline documentation that is just a pain in the ass to digest. You want to see, as a developer, I want to see exactly what's happening, and I want a short summary. So 
I'm going to rest my case at that point, and I'm immediately going to delete this back out of here because we also learned that the LSP doesn't update unless you restart the computer. I mean, the, the editor, which makes sense, um, but annoying, right? So I'm not against like one line of documentation in here so you can get a nice, quick idea of what it does. But then you can, and there's nothing wrong with putting the big, long stuff here, right? You can leave it there. Just, just uh, you know, just do it that way. And then you get this nice, oh God, look at how beautiful that is. It's like so pretty. It's like all organized at the top. And then I can zoom down here if I want to read more about it. It's it's absolutely perfect. Uh, in TypeScript, the inline comment gets picked up by the LSP, which calls the function. Is it the same ago? Do not know. Do not know that. I wish I had an answer. That's all for that video.